Hello everyone, myself Dr. Suresh, Professor of Biochemistry and in this video, I will be teaching you the metabolism of acidic amino acids, glutamic acid and aspartic acid. So, acidic amino acids, as I mentioned, glutamic acid and aspartic acid and the amine forms of these as, uh, amino acids are glutamine and aspartic. Glutamine, the role of glutamine, we have already seen in our previous videos in detoxification of ammonia from the brain. And asparagine is also the aminated form of aspartic acid. They will be forming when there is addition of ammonia to the extra carboxyl group of, for, to form an amide. All the four amino acids are used for protein synthesis and serve important metabolic functions. So to talk about glutamic acid, glutamic acid because in our body, because of transamination reactions, we could able to produce glutamic acid. So it is a non-essential amino acid. So the main source of glutamic acid in our body is transamination reactions where amino group and I mean other amino acids okay such as like alanine and alpha ketoglutarate okay to form like you can say amino acid alpha ketoglutarate what, what happens they form glutamic acid and another keto acid okay here if it is alanine after donating its amino group to alpha ketoglutarate it forms glutamic acid and this alpha ketoic acid will be pyruvate. So enzyme will be alanine transaminase. Okay, glutamic acid is also formed during the metabolism of histidine, proline and arginine. Oxidative deamination where uh, glutamine undergoes uh, deamination in liver cells or to form uh, glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is deaminated to form alpha ketoglutarate by the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase in the liver to form alpha ketoglutarate and liberate free ammonia. So it is glucogenic amino acid as glutamic acid converted into alpha ketoglutarate and enters into TC cycle. So glutamic acid you see here glutamic acid after accepting the ammonia and with the help of glutamine synthase with the help of uh, ATP investment it converted to glutamine and again by the enzyme glutaminase, it removes the ammonia and forms glutamic acid. This is one of the sources for glutamic acid synthesis. And n glutamate. n glutamate is a positive modifier of carbamyl phosphate synthase 1 in urea cycle. That especially the first reaction of urea cycle in mitochondria. So how n glutamate is formed? Glutamic acid react with acetyl coa to form n glutamate. Acetyl group added to glutamic acid and coa-SH will be eliminated. And gamma carboxyglutamic acid GCGA. So this is present in prothrombin and it is very uh, very much required for uh, blood coagulation. So the gamma carboxyl group is added to post transplant modification which needs vitamin K. So excitatory neurotransmitter that means neurons which contain uh, N methyl D aspartate receptor acting as excitatory neurotransmitter and stimulation of uh, non -meth uh, N methyl D aspartate receptors by glutamate opens calcium channel leading to stimulation of nitric oxide synthase that we will study in uh, next uh, videos. This in turn results in transient production of nitric oxide. The raise in cellular levels of cyclic GMP and neurons are excited. So that means it is excitatory neurotransmitter with the help of glutamic acid. Glutathione, we are all aware glutathione. Glutamate is a constitution of tripeptide. Glutathione, what are the functions also we know. Glutamic acid is decarboxylated to GABA which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Gamma, uh, gamma amino butyric acid, in short GABA which is an inhibitor neurotransmitter. So glutamic acid is on decarboxylation that means it is having a extra carboxylic group. So when you remove, I mean to this carboxylic group when you add amino group, so it will be converted into amine form that is gamma amino butyric acid, uh, sorry that is glutamine. But here in GABA formation, here we are removing carboxyl group, we are not adding any amino group but we are uh, deleting carboxyl group. So glutamic acid on decarboxylation gives rise to gamma amino butyric acid. So part of the glutamate in brain can be shunted through GABA pathway and catabolized to succinate which enter into uh, gluconeogenic pathway. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter because it opens chloride channels in post synaptic membranes in central nervous system. Pyridoxal phosphate. Both the formation and catabolism of GABA requires PLP, right? So that is the importance of water soluble vitamin B6 and B6 coenzyme form is PLP. So therefore in pyridoxine deficiency, GABA formation is reduced. Okay, so the inhibitor neurotransmitter, since GABA is inhibitor neurotransmitter, a low level of GABA or deficiency of pyridoxal phosphate will lead to convulsions. Sodium valparate which inhibits GABA oxidase is used in treatment of epilepsy. Congenital deficiencies of GABA, aminotransferase and succinic semi-aldehyde dehydrogenase are reported but are very rare. So when you see the diagrammatic representation how glutamic acid is metabolized, okay, so glutamic acid 
converted to gamma amino butyric acid GABA by decarboxylation. So here CO2 is, has been removed. You see here CO2 has been removed which is a PLP dependent and this GABA converted to succinic semialdehyde and succinic semialdehyde converted to succinate and enter into TCA cycle and it will enter into gluconeogenic pathway. So glutamate decarboxylase, GABA oxidase and succinate semialdehyde dehydrogenase. Next. So the amide form of glutamic acid that is glutamine. So glutamine it is a, again glucogenic amino acid is synthesized from glutamic acid. The amidation of glutamic acid to glutamine is catalyzed by glutamine synthetase. Glutamic acid can react with a molecule of ammonia in presence of ATP to form glutamine. This reaction is important in ammonia trapping and ammonia detoxification from brain as well as for transport of ammonia in non-toxic form. So here ammonia how transported from brain to liver in non-toxic form by forming glutamine from glutamic acid. This reaction is seen in renal tubular cells as well but there it has got a different function. The ammonia reacts hydrogen to form NH4 ammonium ions to excrete hydrogen ions in urine. So the major fate of glutamine is to be hydrolyzed to glutamate and ammonia. Glutamic acid is then deaminated to alpha ketoglutarate and enters into TCA cycle for further catabolism. The nitrogen atoms 3 and 9 of purines are derived from glutamine. So glutamine is a contributor of 3rd and 9th nitrogen atom of purine ring. So glutamine is also the source of 3rd nitrogen of pyrimidine and glutamine is the source of uh, amino group of guanine and cytosine. Glutamine is a conjugative agent in production of phenylester glutamine. Glutamine also donating the amino group of amino sugars and amide group of nicotinamides. Next coming to aspartic acid, it is also a non-essential glucogenic amino acid. Aspartate on transamination give rise to oxalate state which enters into TCA cycle. That's why it is glucogenic in nature. Aspartic amino transferase is the enzyme to convert the amino group of aspartate to alpha ketoglutarate to form oxalate state. So AST here you the enzyme, it is also a PLP dependent. You see here uh, aspartate plus alpha ketoglutarate converted to oxalate state and glutamate. AST is increased in cardiac ischemia because the location of AST is normally high in case of cardiac tissues. So in cardiac ischemia, AST level, because it is an intracellular enzyme, AST, aspartate transferase, intracellular enzyme. When there is any damage to this cardiac tissue, the, these enzyme levels will be increased in the circulation. So it is also in relation to hepatic disease also because majority in cardiac uh, tissues and less amount in hepatic tissue. Malate aspartate schedule transfers the cytoplasmic NDH into mitochondria for oxidation in the electron transport chain. Aspartic acid is an important member of urea cycle. Yes, the whole molecule of aspartic acid is incorporated and in combination with citrulline to form arginosuccinate. It is directly contributes alpha amino group to the urea molecule. So one amino group is coming from the ammonia itself and other amino group is donated by aspartic acid. The carbon skeleton of aspartic acid can also enter into glucogenic pathway as fumarate. So you see citrulline aspartate to form arginine and fumarate and fumarate again enter into TCA cycle which will be entering into again gluconeogenesis. So aspartic this is amide form of aspartic acid when there is addition of ammonia to the aspartic acid. The reaction is similar to formation of glutamine. Aspartic can be hydrolyzed to aspartate and ammonia by asparaginase in liver. L-asparaginase is an anti-cancer drug against leukemias and lymphomas because the cells which cannot synthesize asparagin, the enzymes will destroy the available aspartic in the blood. So cancer cells will die. Asparagin is glucogenic amino acid. So when you see the reaction aspartic acid how it is converting to aspartic similar to glutamine synthase synthetase there also ATP is required. So N of glutamine and aspartic acid converted to aspartic and asparaginase will convert aspartic to aspartic acid by removing amino group. So this is the overall uh, picture of uh, glutamic acid and aspartic acid and their wide distributed functions. You see here glutamic acid converted to glutamine it is a reversible thing. Again conversion of aspartic acid to asparagine this is also a reversible thing. So the white functions so what are the contributors of I mean, glutamic acid histidine, arginine, proline okay and from glutamine also you can make a glutamic acid and what are the functions glutamic acid will be incorporated in proteins in making of glutathione and making of inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA and tra transdeamination reactions ammonia from all amino acids and making of urea formation glutamic acid play a major role okay. And alpha ketoglutarate uh, entering into TCA cycle and making glucose. So again, glutamine is also having vari vari variety of functions like in protein synthesis, trapping of ammonia in brain, urinary ammonia, purine ring formation, pyrimidine ring formation by donating third and ninth nitrogen of purine and uh, third nitrogen of uh, pyrimidine, guanine, cytosine making, detoxification reactions, hexomines. So all these functions related to glutamine. When you are coming to talk about aspartic acid, 
it is glucogenic in nature via fumarate formation and it involved in urea cycle whole molecule of aspartic acid is incorporated in urea cycle and making of pyrimidine ring by contributing c4 i mean carbon 4 and 5 6 and nitrogen 1 of pyrimidine ring purines of first nitrogen and amino group at sixth carbon has been donated by aspartic acid incorporation into proteins and when you are talking about aspartic functions it is involved in protein biosynthesis and trapping of ammonia in brain as well along with the glutamate. So that is all the overall picture of acidic amino acids in our body. Thanks for watching. Thank you.